Hey guys, I'm back. It is CGI time and you know that is my favorite kind of math. I love, love, love talking about strategies and ways to solve problems and being creative um, with our math. So our problem for today, you might wanna pause the screen and so you have a chance to write it down. But our story goes like this. Um, Mrs. Boat was standing in line at Starbucks waiting to order her vanilla cold brew. And she wondered, hmm, what if Starbucks sold 504 cold brews every day for six days? How many cold brews would that be? A lot. And I would probably order many of those. Anyway, so let's think about our story and what is the important information. Me standing in line is not part of the important information. I just did that for um, dramatic purposes, okay? To give you a story to, to go with. So um, let's talk about what we need to know. So we do know in the question, she's wondering, I'm wondering, sorry, not she, me, I, right here. What if Starbucks sold 504 cold brews every day? So underline sold 504 every day okay every every day and how many days did they do that they did it for six days so underline six days so 504 every day for six days okay and then the final question is asking how many cold brews? How many would that be? Okay, so I'm looking for the total number of cold brews every day for six days. So one thing I want you to think about, what operation am I doing? Okay, am I doing multiplication? Am I doing addition? Am I doing subtraction? Or am I doing division? Okay, so what operation am I using here? What is my equation gonna be that's gonna fit my story? Okay, so 500 cold, cold brews every day for six days. What is that equation gonna look like? Remember, equation is a number sentence. Okay, so operation is the mathematical um, way you're gonna solve it. Okay, multiplication, division, subtraction, or addition. And then your equation is your number sentence. So that's the first thing I want you to think about. What is it you're gonna solve? And then the second thing I want you to do is I want you to set your timer for 10 to 15 minutes, and I want you to solve this as many ways as you can, okay? And then I'm gonna go over um, three of some very common ways that you're probably trying to solve this, and uh, we're gonna talk about them, okay? So pause the video, set your timer for 15 minutes, and try to solve it as many ways as you can. Get creative with it, draw yourself a picture, um, break those numbers apart, put them back together, use the strategies that we've um, been learning. We've been learning um, about factors and powers of 10. We've been learning about place value. See what you can bring to this problem of the new skills that you're learning and see what you can do with it. Okay guys, so um, pause the video and I'll see you back here in like 15 minutes. and you should be back. Okay, so um, do you like that dramatic entrance? I just, okay, no? Okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, that wasn't funny. All right, okay, I'm moving on. So your equation that you should have come up with, I'm gonna write the word equation. I love this word. I don't know why, I just love to say the word equation. Equation, it's got my favorite word part, T-I-O-N, makes the shun sound. It doesn't look like it should, but it does. So anyways, just a little, you know, throwing a little spelling in at you. So it's got my favorite word part. Um, so our, we have 504, day, 504 cold brews every day for six days. So you can write it using the commutative property. It doesn't matter which order you write it in. It could be 500 four cold brews every day for six days equals, and I'm gonna use the variable, I'm using my variable C for cold brew, 
but it could be anything. You could use any variable you like here. Um, or I could do for six days, every day for six days, I sold, or Starbucks sold, 500 for cold brews. Okay, so there's my variable. I use the commutative property. It doesn't matter which order you solve this in. You could do 504 groups of six, which is crazy, because then you'd have to count by six 504 times. So the one that matches our story is six. So for six days, every day, 504 cold brews. So we're gonna wanna look at that 504 six different times. So one way that many of you probably approach this is with repeated addition. So I'm going to show you with repeated addition. Now with repeated addition, it could look a couple different ways. So I'm going to show you the two most common ways. So you know that there are six of them. So you could have simply done 504 six times. That's five, one, two, three, four, five, one more. And you could have added it that way, okay? Another way that you could have done it is maybe you took this 504 and you broke it up into two pieces that you already know, 500 and fours. So you could have done the same concept, just added them almost like you're doing expanded form. So you're doing repeated addition with expanded form. So this, I'm gonna write expanded. Okay, so you're doing it with that expanded form idea, which is something we have been talking about as we've talked about place value and how to break numbers apart. One, two, three, four, five, one more. Okay, and if you added this up, well, you know one, two, three, four, five, six fours is 24. And then we have, if I'm counting up my 500s, you may have grouped them together and go, oh, well, I know that's 1,000. And that's kind of the way I like to think about it. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And if I add these two together, I am gonna get 3,024, okay? If you were to do it over here, you're doing the same thing and you probably, you could have added it the same way. Even though you wrote it this way, Maybe you added up your fours together and got 24, okay? And maybe you uh, carried, maybe you um, carried that 20 up here, which there's no other tens, so you could just bring that 20 on down, added up your 500s, and get 3,024. Now, do you want to see a really cool trick? on how to use that power of 10 that we've been doing. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what we're really looking for. This is, this is probably how you're solving it, and that's okay. Okay, this is perfect. It got you to where you needed to be. You used your knowledge of multiplication and groups, and you did your repeated addition, and now I'm gonna take the same problem, the six, groups of 504 and I am going to show you how you can use the power of 10 and factor pairs that you already know. So I know I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite the problem. Okay and this is I'm gonna show with my power of 10 Okay, so I'm gonna show what I know with my power of 10 and factors that I know. So these are facts I already know. I can look here and say, well, I know what six times five is. 
okay? So I know six times five and I know six times four. So those are things that I'm looking for that are very familiar to me. So if I look at the first one and I said, well, I know six times five, I know six times five is 30. I also know that six times four equals 24, okay? This is what I know. Okay, so what I know is six times five is 30, six times four is 24. So how can I use my power of 10 here? Because that five is really what? Exactly, it's 500. So if I take what I know here and I go six times 500, I'm gonna put that in parentheses because that's not all that I'm doing. I also, I don't have any tens here, okay? So I, but I do have six times four. So I have to add in six times four. What? So not only am I using the power of 10 to help me, and I'm using the facts that I know, this right here is called the distributive property. I'm taking one of my factors. Remember, factors are two numbers that you're multiplying together to get a given number. And that number that we're trying to get to is 3,024. So I'm gonna use the distributive property to break up this 504 as 500 and four. So six times 500, I know six times five is 30. So six times 500 is gonna be 100 times more. So I have to go 100 times more than that 30. So I'm gonna get 3,000. And I'm gonna do six times four, which is 24, which gives me 3,024. And this is called, when you do this, you're using facts that you know, you're using your knowledge of the power of 10, and you are putting it all together using the distributive property. Okay, so you are using the distributive property to do that. Okay, so there you go. So put a star next to the one that you would like to explain. Maybe you did it differently. So what you're gonna do is you are going to um, choose which one of yours you would like to explain to your classmates. You're gonna go to Flipgrid, which is gonna be on the next slide. You're gonna go to that Flipgrid link. You are going to explain your solution and then you are going to visit three other students and give them positive feedback, questions, compliments, um, keep it light, keep it positive, and um, that's what you're doing today. So there you go, power of 10, using all the things that we have learned so far. See, guys, it's all